Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Daz Reacts. And recently, Andrew Tate got banned from the internet. And I, I don't know how you ban someone from the internet. You can't, basically, because they can just come back with different accounts and things like that. You can't ban someone from the internet. But Piers Morgan attempts to roast Andrew Tate in this in this video. And I like Piers Morgan. I like that he says how it is and whatever's on his mind, that's what he's going to say. But I also like Andrew Tate because he's the same as well. So I think this can get a bit heated. This can get a bit fiery. And I'm hoping it does. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I will be uploading daily. But I'm, I'm eager to get into this. I'm eager to watch this. I'm hoping that it's fire, to be honest. I really am. Do you respect women? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? Do you think that 18, 19 year old women are more attractive than 25 year old women? I think there's attractive people. Uh, that's that's a loaded question. I don't know. Well, it's not really, is it? I, I can't. You know why I'm asking you? Of course I do, but I can't sit well, here and for say. For the benefit of viewers who don't know why I'm asking, you said this. In general, this is also one of the reasons men find youth attractive. You want to block the internet? I'll block the internet right effing now. The reason 18 and 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 year olds is because they've been through less dick. People say, oh, you can't say that, but yes, I can. A 19-year-old is more attractive than a 26-year-old woman, and I'll tell you why. Because that 26-year-old has talked to more guys, been to the club more times, been effed and dumped more times, more arguments, more mess, more for me to clean up. That is misogyny. Why? Because you are encouraging a mindset about 25-year-old women that makes them sound out to be infinitely less desirable than 18, 19-year-olds, and having effectively been having too much sex to be taken in a more respectful way. That would yeah, I, I watched a video of Andrew Tate the other day, and he said that <clears throat> like, if, it's the, if a man sleeps with 200 women, he's the man, that, like, he's, top, he's top man, he's top dog. But if a woman sleeps with 200 men, then she's a slag and no one's going to want her and things like that. And for me, that's wrong. That I think either way you're going to look at it is that if a woman went up to a man and said, I've slept with 200, man, 200 men, that man's going to go, uh, yeah, no thanks, I'm all right, I'm good, I don't know what you're swimming with. But if a man went up to a woman and said, I've slept with 200 women, that woman's then going to turn around and say, yeah, well, no thanks, because I don't know what you're swimming with either. I think it's the same both ways, to be fair been having too much sex to be taken in a more respectful way that would well firstly even if that was the case that wouldn't be misogyny well, what did you mean by what you said that's not misogyny because it's not anti-women I'm, I'm saying that an 18 or a 19 year old woman would be more desirable pretty anti-25 year old woman anti-25 year old women we can argue but not misogyny well that's misogyny that's, then, that's, no 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 it's not well, being anti any woman at all is misogyny not when i'm not when i'm saying that women are beautiful and attractive at a certain age and saying the age you're saying 18 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 well, than ageist perhaps but misogynistic absolutely is that not. Really, but you just accepted it was misogyny no i didn't you said it was misogyny i'm telling you no it's not but if a 26 year old woman is watching Watching this and has heard those comments yeah would you just say to her I, look i'm sorry i shouldn't have said that no i won't i will say that i am sorry that that offends you however there's a large contingent of the world that doesn't and, mean you're sorry uh, no i'm not sorry that's the point i'm making i'm sorry if that offends you however there's a large contingent of the world that believe that and i was mediating for a conversation parts of the world the thing is, it, it is misogyny for the simple fact is that if he would have turned around and said, listen, it is just a case that you've got a 19-year-old and you've got a 25-year-old. And I, the 19-year-old is just more appealing to me. They've still got that like that teen kind of look that's more appealing as a 25-year-old that going to mid-20s, they've aged a bit more and things like that. Then that is, it's, yeah, it's ageism. But it is the fact that like he's turned around and said that a 19-year-old's more appealing to me than a 25-year-old because a 25-year-old's been through more dick, has been out to the club more. And there's nothing to say that a 19 year old hasn't done more than some 25 year olds there's 25 year old like women that are virgins and things like that so you can't you can't really say it like that but i'm sorry if that offends you however there's a large contingent of the world that believe that and i was mediating for a conversation parts of the world that believe that about 26 year old women are parts of the world where women are not allowed out on their own that's your that's a conversation they have to have. wear full burkas well that's a conversation they're not they allowed have. to drive cars that's nothing to do with me, but is that right? the kind of well, for a woman that you... I was, mediating a, I was mediating a conversation. No, I'm asking you what you think. I, I don't live in a country where that happens. So you're using that as the excuse for why you're not sorry for saying it. It's not an excuse. Is that there are parts of the world where this is fine? My friend. So my question to you is, well, do you think it's fine? I don't think it's fine. I live in a world where... You don't think it's fine? My, the reason this I... This isn't that hard, Andrew. You can simply say, Piers, you know what? With the benefit of hindsight, I wish I hadn't said it like that. And if a 26-year-old woman's watching... I'm sorry I said that, because that actually is blatantly misogynist. And even though that's a view held by other parts of the world, it's not a view I share. Now, I would respect you more if you said that yeah. than if you try and say, well, it's said in other parts of the world, so I'm not sorry. I think...
that's the thing that like with Andrew Tate, and this is the one thing about him that he can say things. But if someone says, "Oh no, that don't sound right," you've made th that you saying this has made you sound like this kind of person and that kind of person, and he'll defend himself until he's blue in the face. He's not the sort of person that will admit that he's wrong and admit that like what he said, he, it's just said in a wrong way. It's not meant in the way that he said it. It's just said in the wrong way. And do you know what? I got. I'm not gonna lie. That's what I love about Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan will say it how it is. Piers Morgan does not give a crap, and he is the only reason I used to watch Good Morning Britain. And he used to do Good Morning Britain here in the UK, which is a talk show. And you get all the guests and everything on. And I believe it was everything that happened with the royal family with um, Harry and Meghan and things like that, which is why he ended up either losing his job or walking away from the job, which was a shame because he had his own opinion. And I hate the fact that you get these presenters and they will just go with the flow and they will do what they're told. With Piers Morgan, he's one of these that he did not give a crap who he offended. He will just say what's on his mind. And that's what you've got to respect. And that's what you've got to appreciate in journalism. And... You can tell with Andrew Tate here that, like, from his responses as well, it feels like he's being put on the spot. Piers Morgan is one person that you probably wouldn't want to get interviewed by because they're not. He's not going to take no shit, and he's not going to back down from a conversation with you. More have you said that? Yeah. Than if you try and say, "Well, it's said in other parts of the world, so I'm not sorry." I think you. That need, doesn't tell me what you think. Then you need to understand why my content existed in the first place. My content existed because I tried my very hardest to be an absolute and not a realist, especially with uncomfortable truths. Mm. I was pointing out that very uncomfortable... Is that a truth? Though? It's an uncomfortable truth in many parts of the world. It's not a truth that I'm happy about. An inquest this week found that a 14-year-old girl, Molly Russell, died from an act of self-harm while suffering from depression and the negative effects of online content. The coroner said she was exposed to material that may have influenced her in a negative way, and in addition, what started as depression and become a much more serious depressive illness, and she very sadly took her life. That's, that's absolutely disgusting. Right. Her father... It's terrible. Her father's campaign for better protections against potentially dangerous social media algorithms, right? It says that the particularly graphic content she saw romanticised acts of self-harm, normalised her condition, and focused on a limited and irrational view without a, a, any counterbalance of normality. First of all, what is your response to that? Nothing to do with you. That's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's the first thing. Yeah, it's, it is nothing to do with me. Uh, the fact that a 14-year-old girl took her life is truly sad. The world we live in today is... The world we live in... The, the fact that something like that happened is almost mind-blowing to me. That's truly, that's truly sad. I actually feel sad inside to see something like that. What has come clear to me in the interview is that a lot of things you say you wouldn't say now that you've said before... Well, so I'd say them differently, perhaps. You, you, yeah, right. So... To me, that's an acceptance, not just that you want to get back on platforms, because maybe that was one of the reasons you, you were no platform, but that you've recognised and understood the potential harm to the wrong kind of impressionable mind by some of the things you've said. Would that be fair? I think that's 80% fair. I recognise and understand that with massive fame, you have to be more careful about being mis construed. Like I said earlier, 1% of people misunderstanding you doesn't matter with a small audience. It matters with a very large audience. With power comes responsibility. Mm. I still believe the things I say. I do not want to be a negative force for the world. I also understand that I am a man who's lived a very difficult, nuanced life, and I am capable of making nuanced points that may be misunderstood by teenagers. However, that can be said about anybody and everything. Every opinion online can be misunderstood by children. Trying to protect children from the internet is a very interesting subject in and of itself because I would argue that 80% of the content on the internet is can be negative or detrimental to a young mind that doesn't understand the world. So, okay, see, so the thing is, is that like I, I have reacted to Andrew Tate uh, on different levels. I've, I've reacted to him in a positive way. A lot of the stuff that he says is positive in a lot of ways and you you'd listen to him and you think yeah that's true a lot of the things he says about women and things like that i do not agree with one bit i i never have and i never will because it's just something that like you can't be that way and for for viewers that are watching obviously the whole situation with molly russell had nothing to do with him but for for my belief it is the case that with the internet now and with the emergence of the of social media and how big it's got and things like that Every, all of these parents are saying that it's down to the schools to teach their ki teach the kids about social media. It's down to the children to like, be nice. It's down to it's down to the parents basically. That parents do and don't get me wrong because I do it as well. My my daughter watches YouTube and she like some of the crap that she watches on YouTube. They're just other kids in that, but 
Like it's the case that it, it can play with her mind, but it's down to me then. I will sit and look at it and I will see things that if I don't like what she's watching, I will have it blocked. I will not let her watch it no more. And that's the thing. And you get these parents like Molly Russell that it's such a sad thing to happen, like for someone to take their life over something that they've seen on the internet. But it is the parents that should be educating their children that should be teaching their children and like i know it's hard like the, the older generation my mum and dad don't have to teach the kids about the internet because all of their kids are older like but this generation of children now the majority of their parents are the younger side of the parents so they most of their parents use social media most of their parents see what happens on social media so you can't blame the likes of andrew tate because you're going to get thousands and thousands and if not millions of people that go online and try to do what he does the difference is is that most people give up on their journey to anything and he hasn't and he, he's worked and he's worked and he's worked to the point where he's got a following and he's got he's, he's got his followers and he's got his haters and things like that but he's worked hard to get there and yeah some things you need to take with a pinch of salt some things that and it is just the impressional mind, but you can't ban him from the internet just because other people have got impressional minds. People need to be able to make their own mind up about him and like for anything that they see online. I understand there's a lot of like bullying online and things like that, but that is where the parents should step in. And the schools and that can help, but it is down to the parents mainly that if someone says I'm being bullied on Twitter, oh no, I'm being bullied on Twitter, Twitter's deleted, gone. That's it someone can be bullying you on twitter that lives ten thousand miles away that lives 12 14 hours on a plane and you're getting bullied on twitter delete the app it's not like you're being bullied in school and you think i don't want to go to school the next day because someone's bullying me on twitter it could be someone on the other side of the world delete twitter delete instagram block that person that there's ways around it and yeah i feel like i'm rambling i feel like i'm i'm, I'm not starting to make sense in my own head now i was talking about one subject again onto the other and i'm but yeah, so I, I do like this. I like the fact that, that Piers Morgan got in and interviewed him and it wasn't as fiery as I thought it was going to be, but I like I like the I, I like the energy from both of them and how they both spoke and how they both responded. But interesting Let's just... early preview there of my interview with Andrew Tate. Like I say, very controversial guy. He's banned from... With the new... Okay, so yeah... Would Clint Eastwood take... So yeah, that's... Okay, my great uncle wears a ski hat. I don't know why the hell family guy and everything started to come up there. So yeah, that's the thing that like... I really enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed that video. And, and I, I I liked listening to both perspectives. I've got my own thoughts on Andrew Tate. And some of them are good thoughts. Some of them are bad thoughts. That, but would I ban him from the internet? No. Would I tell him he has to delete any of his content? No, I wouldn't. I, I personally believe everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Everyone is entitled to say what they want to say. They may get agreed with, they may get a backlash, but everyone has that right. That Unless you're going at someone hard and in a sense of bullying and things like that, that's a different matter. But for this situation, that what can you do but anyway listen guys like i said i'm rambling on in there but i hope you enjoyed it if you did and you want me to react to more andrew tate or tristan tate let me know in the comments down below and if there's any specific videos you want me to react to add a link to it and i will add it to my list and get around to it but i hope you enjoyed this i really did i will be uploading daily don't forget a brrr, but seriously my head just brrr. I don't know what the hell goes on with my head sometimes. Listen, I hope you enjoy. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I will be uploading daily, so I will see you in the next one. My head. I don't know what the hell is wrong with my head.